kg collar at A and the 15 kg collar at B slide on smooth rods as shown. The cable AB is 2 meters long and what we want to know is the distances CA and BD. Let's call this from CAS. This is the distance from C to A. I'm going to call the distance from B to D T and I also want to know the tension in the cable TAB. So those are the three things I'm looking for. Now the procedures, as of always, are to draw some free body diagrams, write equations of equilibrium, solve, answer, and check. The things that I've got to think about here in terms of particles, I have two interesting spots. So I'm going to draw free body diagrams of both A and B. Neither of these individually is going to let me solve all the problem, but if I consider them both, then I can write my equations of equilibrium in terms of my unknowns, S, T, and TAB. Then I'm going to solve my equations, answer my question, and check the answer, make sure it makes sense. Now the free body diagram of point A, if you stop to consider it, you've got your collar here with a known weight. Remember that you've got to change this into kilogram, uh, in, from kilograms into newtons quite quickly. And it's in the negative J direction, and I also have the tension in the cord, which I'm looking for, which goes from A to B. This is a smooth rod. That means that I do not have any force along this dotted line. On the other hand, the rod is in fact preventing motion. As soon as you have motion being prevented, you need to say that there's a force in the direction that motion is being prevented. Which way is motion being prevented? Well, A can't move off of the rod. The collar can move along the rod, but it can't move off the rod. In two dimensions, if you say something can't move off of a rod, that means it can't move perpendicular to the rod. In three dimensions, it means it can't move perpendicular to the rod in either of the directions perpendicular to the rod. So I will have a normal force here and here, both of them, in 3D, where N1 and N2 are both perpendicular to the rod and, for that matter, perpendicular to each other. Okay, those are the forces that exist on my collar at A. Once you've drawn your free body diagrams, we want to get each of these forces in Cartesian form. Now let's concentrate on, for the moment, on TAB. TAB goes from A to B, but that's not really particularly helpful at the moment because I don't know where A and B are. I know where C is, I know where D is, and I know where E is, but the Cartesian coordinates of A and B are not given. We're going to get from A to B by walking. Specifically, I'm going to go from A to C, then I'm going to go back to the origin, then I'm going to go from the origin to point D, and then I'm going to go from D to point B. Each of these is a path that I do know something about. So if we consider first our first step, I'm going to go from A to C. This is essentially, I want to move a distance S, that's the variable that I'm looking for, down the rod CE. Now I do know something about the rod CE, so this is a magnitude and a direction along a line. If you have a magnitude and a direction along a line, we're going to find a position vector and a unit vector. So I want to find the position and unit vector from E to C. Once I do that, then I can say I want to go S in that direction. So my point C was given, that's 0, 0, 005, and my point E was given, that was 0, 050. 0. Those are given in the problem. Now I can find the position vector, REC is minus 5J plus 5K, and its magnitude, RCE, is the square root of 50, or 7.07. .07. That's the magnitude. Now I can find the unit vector along the rod. This is going to be 1 over the square root of 2 minus J plus K. That's the direction of the rod that A is moving along. So if I want to go from A to C, I want to go S meters in the direction of this unit vector I just found. So I'm going S over the square root of 2 times minus J plus K. That's the position vector from A to C. Now, once I've gone from A to C, the second thing I want to do is I want to go from C back to the origin. That just means I'm going minus 5 meters in the K direction. The third little trip I want to take goes from the origin to D, which again is just 2i by looking at it. And now, last, I want to go from D to B. This is the same thing as saying I want to go t meters up the rod DE. I'm going to do the same way I did it before. My point D was 200. Zero, zero. My point E is 0, 050. Zero. Once you have D and E, you can find the position vector for the rod. RDE is minus 2i plus 5j. 
2 minus from. The unit vector I have to divide by the magnitude. The magnitude of this is the square root of 29. So the unit vector along the rod is minus 2 over the square root of 29i plus 5 over the square root of 29j. So if I want to go from d to b, I want to go t meters along this unit vector, which is to say to go from d to b, I have minus 2t over the square root of 29 in the i direction and 5t over the square root of 29 in the j direction. All of this is just to get us the position vector from a to b. To get the position vector from a to b, I want to go from a to c, and then from c to the origin, and then from the origin to d, and then from d to b. Specifically, add up each of those components. And then r a b is minus 2t over the square root of 29 plus 2i plus minus s over the square root of 2 plus 5t over the square root of 29j plus s over the square root of 2 minus 5k. That's r from a to b. I don't want RAB. To get TAB, my force here on my free body diagram, I need to have magnitude TAB times the unit vector in the, along the chord. So the unit vector from A to B, that means I need to divide RAB by its magnitude. Well, the magnitude of RAB is the length of the cable. The length of the cable is 2. That was given in your problem. So, if I take the position vector I just found, I can find the unit vector from A to B is RAB over 2. This also gives us actually one equation in terms of finding our unknowns. The square root of each of these components squared has going to have to be 2, or rather I can square each of them and I can say this is equal to 4. So that's one equation in S and T. Now that obviously I can't solve for S, T, and T, A, B with one equation, but I can keep going. I haven't yet actually done my equations of equilibrium. So if I consider my force, TAB, is given by its magnitude times its unit vector. So this is TAB. The free body diagram of point A will give us three equations, and I've got this one extra one from the distance, the length of the cable. Now, if you stop to think about it, your unknowns right now are S, T, TAB, the magnitude, and the magnitude of the normals. No matter what you do, you can't solve for five unknowns with four equations. It just doesn't work. So, we have to go back to what we, what we know from the problem. Remember, we said here, we have to draw the free body diagrams of both A and B. We haven't done that yet. So if we consider the free body diagram of B, let's look at the other rod. Here's my other cable. I still have a weight, WB. I have a tension in the cable, TBA. TBA is going to go from B to A. And by the same argument before, I'm going to have two normal forces. Now, they're not necessarily the same as the other. It's not the same rod. It's not the same weight. The weight is going to be 15 times 9.81 in the minus J direction. Now, I have my free body diagrams for both A and B. N, where N3 and N4 are both perpendicular to each other and to the rod. What, what else can we say here? We can also say that TBA, this, this is just the tension in the cable. It's going to have the same magnitude, but it's going to have the opposite direction because, of course, it's the other side of the cable. TBA that we have here for the free body diagram of point B is the same tension in the opposite direction. We don't have to go back through and figure that all out again. We already did that. So if we did the sum of the forces on this side at B, we'd get three more equations in our unknowns for this set of TAB. TAB is in terms of T and S and the magnitudes of these unknowns. We could find the direction. We know it's perpendicular to that cable and we know the direction of the, of the rod. Excuse me. N3 and N4 are perpendicular to the rod and we know where the rod is. So we could find out what those are. If we want to look at it, we have only seven equations and only seven unknowns. Yay! Because TAB, T, and S are in both sets, you have five from the free body diagram for A, only two new ones from the free body diagram of B, and you have this extra equation for the length of the cable. That's seven equations and seven unknowns, and you can solve. In terms of making your life easier, we don't actually want to know what the magnitudes of all of those normal forces are. Nobody asked. So there are all of these things which we would have to solve for if we solved all seven of these equations in seven unknowns. This is one of those times where you try to remember that engineers do things as easily as they can. 
it does not make sense to set up all seven if we can find a shortcut. So what is the shortcut? Instead of writing the sum of the forces in each of these coordinate directions for both A and B, which we could do, it would work, we'd get the answer, we can simplify our lives by writing the sum of the forces in a different coordinate system. Specifically, I want to do the sum of the forces along the rods, and the sum of the forces normal to the rod in one direction, and the sum of the forces normal to the rod in the other direction. 3D, two normals. The nice thing about that is that this first part only includes the vector TAB and the weight when you're talking about the free body diagram of A. It only includes that TBA and the other weight for the free body diagram of B. Now, this sum of the forces along the rods amounts to two equations that include none of the four normals. That's good stuff. These two equations plus this extra one for the cable length give us three equations in three unknowns. And that is going to be easier to solve. So, how do we get the sum of the forces along the rod? We know where the rod is. So what we want to do is consider the projection of each of the forces along the rod. How do we do a projection? We're going to find a dot product of the forces and the unit vector along the rod. So if we consider the free body diagram for A, to go back to the vector formulation, you want to say that the sum of all the vectors is equal to zero. So if we looked at this, this is TAB vector plus N1 vector plus N2 vector plus the weight vector equals half, has to equal zero. To get the sum of the forces along the rod, EC, I'm going to take the dot product of that equation and the unit vector along that rod. Remember that a dot product is commutative, so I can say that I'm going to take the dot product of each of these things and individually. Now the nice thing about this is that each of these is zero because the dot product of two vectors when they're perpendicular is equal to zero. So since the ends are normal to the rod, their dot products are equal to zero. So essentially all I have to do is consider the dot product of lambda EC and TAB and the dot product of lambda EC and the weight and set those equal to zero. What does that look like? I'll write it out. I'm going to actually take these dot products and set it equal to zero. That gives me the equation S over 4 TAB minus 5T over 2 in the square root of 58 TAB plus another S over 4 TAB minus 5 over 2 on the square root of 2 TAB plus 98.1 over the square root of 2 equals 0. This is my second equation in TAB, S, and T. First one was this cable length. The third one comes from the free body diagram of B. Again, I want to take the sum of the forces along the rod. Now I'm going to use it along the rod DE because I'm dealing with the free body diagram for B. I'm going to take the dot product with the unit vector along DE and I get 2 over the square root of 29 TAB minus T over 2 TAB plus 5S over 2 times the square root of 58 TAB minus 136.63 and that's equal to 0. This is my third equation. I've got three equations and three unknowns. You can plug it into any sort of equation solver that you'd like, and you get two different answers because this is a quadratic answer. Your first one says TAB is minus 251.27, S is 9.2963, and T is 7.9335. This is where answering the question and checking your work comes in. If you look at this, the first thing that is a clue is that the tension in the cable is negative. Generally, ropes don't push. But even if you thought, well, it was maybe a really thick cable or something, what we've got right here is that S, S is the distance from A to C, S is 9.2. But if you look back over here at the distance from the position vector RCE, the distance from C to E is only 7. Well, the distance from C to E is 7, then the distance from C to A can't be 9. So this isn't correct. It must be the other answer. The other answer says TAB is 251 newtons, T is 2.84 meters, and S is 4.85 meters. That makes a whole lot more sense in terms of looking at our figure. And 251 newtons is a reasonable amount if you're holding up those other colors.